Hello and welcome everybody to our Applications 101 webinar. We'll give a few minutes here for people to get in and get situated. So please feel free to grab uh, some water or some coffee and we'll get started here shortly. Thank you. All right, hello everybody. My name is David Dwyer. I serve as the Director of Admissions and Marketing at Faith Lutheran Middle School and High School. We really appreciate everybody taking some time out of their evening tonight to get started to join with us for this Applications 101 webinar. Uh, joining me today on the webinar are our other admissions team's members. They will be helping to answer questions as they come into our Q&A feature. They'll also be answering questions as they come in through chat. So please feel free to go ahead and uh, send in questions as you guys have them. Um, you can also hold on to them for a little bit because we'll have a chance for Q&A here at the end. Um, but we're certainly here. This whole process, this whole webinar is for you. We want to make sure you guys all feel really comfortable with the process with applying to Faith Lutheran Middle School and High School. We really look forward to the opportunity to get to know you and your family. Most importantly, your potential student here. So thank you for making time for this today. Uh, the other panelists joining me are Ms. Ashlyn May, who serves, at our, uh, serves as our admissions counselor. Uh, Ashlyn is a class of 2016 Faith Lutheran alumni as well, one of our faith faithful who was here from sixth grade on through 12th grade. We're really lucky to have her as a part of our staff. She joined us just last month. Uh, and also joining us as a panelist this evening is Ms. Jen Whitney. She serves as our admissions coordinator. She's been with us since last January. So odds are if you guys have gone through the application process or emailed in over the summer, you've already gotten a chance to talk to one of our members of the admissions team. And we're really grateful for that opportunity and we look forward to speaking with you further. Without any further ado, I'll go ahead and jump into the application process itself. I'm going to cover the nuts and bolts of, of what you need to do, what we are asking for, and what you can expect as you start the application process here with Faith Lutheran, whether that's for grades six, seventh, or eighth, or for one of our high school grade levels as well. Okay. So as you guys have questions, please feel free to send those in using the Q&A, and we'll keep answering those. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, if the pictures weren't enough, we've got some more pictures here. Uh, you can see our lovely faces. There's three of us holding down the fort in the office. Um, so please feel free. You can call us, you can email us, um, but just also give us a little bit of time as we get to know you guys and also get back to you. Uh, we want to make sure that we're answering all of your questions in a timely manner. You can find all of our contact information online at our school's website as well by visiting faithlutheranlv.org. We've got a couple of great events coming up uh, for you as well, since we're just now getting started with the admissions process. The application is only one step. Uh, we know that you are still in the process of getting to know us, getting to know our school, and most importantly, we wanna make sure that your student is comfortable here with campus. We'll have a lot of time to help make sure you're convinced and feel like this is the right place for us. Participating in our admissions events are gonna be a great way beyond the application process to make sure you and your student both feel really comfortable here and can see yourselves here from grades six through 12, whenever it is that you might be joining us. The two events I want to be sure to point out to you are our campus experiences. Uh, Explore Faith is an open house experience that we host here. We'll have three open house experiences throughout this uh, admission cycle, starting with Saturday, September the 24th, continuing again on October the 22nd, and our final Explore Faith will be hosted on February the 4th. These are choose your own adventure type events uh, where our campus will be open from 9 to 11 a.m. You can come at any point during that period, walk around campus, interact with our student ambassadors, and get a good feel for everything that we offer here at Faith Lutheran. Another opportunity for you guys to come onto campus would be via our campus tours. We host those on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays throughout the school year. Um, we've got an availability calendar posted online right now. If you visit faithlutheranlv.org slash visit, you'll be able to see our campus tour calendar uh, and schedule an appointment for yourself. 
The Explore Faith and the Campus Tour, while similar because you get exposure to our, our campus here, are two distinct different events. And there isn't one that's right or better for you than the other. The Explore Faith, we have a completely open campus. You guys will be able to explore all the different activities we have going on. But we'll only have a select number of our visiting student ambassadors, our visa students here on campus. Um, so a little bit more of a pared down overall experience. Uh, whereas our campus tours happen during the day, you'll be able to see the hustle and bustle of campus. But we might not get to go into every classroom because of the classes we have going on. So there isn't one that's better or worse for, for you or for your student. Uh, but please make sure to choose the event that is right for you. All right, if you're joining us here today, odds are you've already seen that our application officially opened on September the 6th. Uh, you can go online to our website, faithlutheranlv.org slash apply to get started. It's a multi-step process. And really the best way I can kind of categorize it for you guys is it's a whole bunch of hurry up and wait. All right, there's a lot of different things that we're gonna ask for, a lot of different information that we're gonna want you to participate in and turn in as we go. Um, so the best way to do is to get started early, to work your way through the process Process, turn in documents according to our deadlines, and I'll cover those here shortly, um, and then just be ready for each new phase as it opens, okay? For the entire month of September, we are having a free application. Normally, there's a $50 application fee due to submit your app, um, but that is waived during the month of September, so another incentive for you to go ahead and get started with it. All right, so like I said, we've got multiple steps in the process. Really starting the application is just step number one. Uh, and each one of these is, is one that we have uh, some different thresholds, some different requirements for you. So first step is submit an application for, with us. You can do that via the website. That's the only way to do that is to submit it digitally. Then once we process your application, we're gonna assign a checklist for you through our Crusader Connect account. I'll show that to you, give you some screenshots so you are aware of what that looks like here shortly uh, and you're going to be able to upload the documents we ask for directly through your checklist okay we make this really simple and intuitive for you to use that way as you get documents as you guys have uh, sources and information you'd like to provide to us you can do that on your own time through crusader connect and we're going to want you to request re recommendations again this is done through crusader connect you just need a name and an email address we're going to ask for a couple of different recommendations on behalf of your student you'll request those through our system and then the uh, desired recipient that you're requesting those from will get a digital questionnaire to complete on your student's behalf so they do not need to fill out an old school letter or a paper that you can think about when you went through a college application process yourself uh, they will be filling out a digital questionnaire on behalf of your students so we try to make that real easy and simple we do ask for a couple of documents um, that we're gonna outline here. But a couple of them, we want you to wait. Don't go ahead and submit your first quarter report cards right now if the first quarter isn't over, okay? Like I said, it's a whole bunch of hurry up and wait. So submit your application now, work on submitting your documents by December 16th. Again, we give you some time there and then we'll get into the next phases. We are not planning on releasing decisions until February. So it's important to get started and get early, uh, get an early start now, but there are some things we're gonna ask you to wait on and we're gonna give you time to turn that in as well. We're gonna ask you to submit uh, standardized test results as well. So you can wait until you take those standardized tests this year in October, or if you have last spring's results, you can submit those as well. Once we get all these items in, uh, the final step in our process generally is a an interview. Uh, we are going to conduct those via Zoom this year. Uh, so once we get a chance to get to know your student, review the documents you have, if we still believe that your student is a fit for Faith Lutheran, we'll invite them to go ahead and schedule a Zoom interview with a member of our admissions committee, and we will not do those until January. Again, so we want you to submit the application now. We want you to work on turning in your documents from October to December. Once you get those documents done, we'll work with you to schedule a Zoom interview uh, in the month of January. And then our goal will be to start releasing decisions in February, okay? So how to apply, like I said, we get started with that online. Ms. May has provided several links already through the chat. So if you guys haven't had a chance, you guys can jump into the chat and see some links. As I discuss that, she'll work on providing those shortcuts directly for you. But if you haven't visited this yet, you can go to our website, www.faithlutheranlv.org and click on the admissions tab. We put this big front and center a number of different ways for you. So it is our goal that we make this super simple for you. You can click either apply now from the admissions dropdown 
or right underneath the giant yellow arrow, right in the heart of the website is apply today. You can click that link to get started. Once you do that, you will be directed to our Crusader Connect system, which allows you to create a profile for yourself as well as your student. And then from there, you'll be prompted to complete an application. Okay, this is a quick screenshot of one of my fake children uh, that you'll see here. Once you've created a Crusader Connect account, you'll be able to navigate from your uh, the children. If you have multiple, if this is a student, you've already have a child here at Faith Lutheran, you'll be able to toggle between multiple students. And then you'll be able to click fill out next to the application on the checklist. As you complete more steps, these checklist steps will be auto populating as well as we mark them off for you. So you guys will be able to, to start with your application there. Once we post your checklist, you'll be able to continue with the checklist. And most importantly, if you're working on applying multiple children here, once you create your first child in the system and complete an application, you can use the apply another child button in the lower right hand side to go ahead and submit another application for an additional student. We ask for a little bit of patience, uh, especially early on here as we have a high volume of applications coming in. Generally, we ask for about two to three business days uh, from the time that you submit your application to allow us to process it. Like I, I detailed early on, there are three of us here in this admissions office. We read all of the applications that we receive. We want to start to get to know your student and your family from the very first piece of information you provide us. So we take our time, we go through each one of those documents, uh, each one of those applications that you submit to us so that we can start getting to know your student. Once we've gotten a chance to process your application, we will go ahead, send you a notification saying that you now have a checklist ready to go. And that is what you're seeing on your screen now. All right, we've got another lovely fake student here for you guys to see admissions test is the name of the student. They've completed the application as indicated by the blue check mark to the left of the application. Uh, and now the remainder item, remaining items on the checklist are visible. I mentioned you get started with the recommendations directly in the checklist as well. That yellow arrow is pointing to the start button. There you can click start. You'll be able to open in and provide information for the person you'd like to submit character references, English teacher recommendations, as well as administrative recommendations. One thing I want to point out with this, we just ask for two recommendations. We want an English teacher recommendation for every student. We also want an administrative recommendation. The character reference is there as an optional piece piece. We have a lot of families that want to make sure that they can do everything they feel like they can uh, to put their student in their best light. So we have made that easy and obvious for you guys to do so. It is not required. If we get an English teacher rec and an admin rec in for your student, we will go ahead and waive that character reference unless we see that you've requested that. So don't feel pressured. Um, we do truly review everything that we receive. So we're happy to read uh, something if a coach, a church leader, um, a scout leader, somebody along those lines would also like to speak on your student's behalf. Please feel free to ask that um, and send them a recommendation request, but do not feel like you have to. Uh, along this side, just to make sure I'm pointing out everything you guys need to see as well. Along the right side, we'll have important updates and information for you guys, uh, and we'll update those as we go. So tomorrow when you log in, you won't see the Applications 101 webinar as a save the date anymore, but you'll still be able to see the short link for Explore Faith. All right, so as indicated on this, these are standard required documents that we're going to ask for everybody. There might be some items. We have a couple of different checklists that we see. So if you're applying for our international student program, you might see a couple of additional documents that we're asking for. If you're requesting academic support services, you might see a couple other checklist steps that we're asking for as well. We just wanna make sure that we're collecting all the pertinent information for your student to make sure that we are making the best decisions possible here as well. Everybody's gonna be asked to turn in a copy of their birth certificate. We're gonna use that to verify um, birth parents, guardianship, age, important things like that. We're gonna ask for your first quarter progress reports from this year, all right? If you're on a trimester system, wait till the end of your first trimester, typically in November, um, but we want to see more than just a progress report. Again, we want to make sure we're putting your students in the best light. So make sure that you have a little bit of time. You can have substantial documentation for grading this year before you turn that in. Don't feel like you're holding up the process when you wait to submit your first quarter report card. We're also going to ask for transcripts from the two previous years as well. So for our families applying for sixth grade, we're going to want to see a full year transcript from third grade, a full year transcript from fourth grade, and then your first quarter progress reports from fifth grade. 
The reason we're asking for so many different documents regarding uh, your school and your children's school history is obviously we're still coming out of the pandemic here. Schools look different for all of our students. We recognize that. And we wanna make sure that we're getting a good understanding of your student and all of the different machinations that students have gone through over the last couple of years, okay? Additionally, we have waived our requirement of submitting an entrance exam prior to starting here as starting the application process with us. Uh, we felt like it's a better indicator of looking at your student's progress over a couple of years than their current progress on one standardized test. So you will not be asked to complete an entrance exam as you're working through uh, the admissions process. We're just going to ask for a couple of different documents from you uh, showing their progress over the last couple of years. I mentioned the standardized test results. For that, we're gonna to want to see the most recent results you have access to. Okay, so if you can wait a little bit to provide us those results as soon as you get map testing results back here in October. If you have ones from spring, go ahead and submit those as well. Um, but we would love to see it from either this year if preferred or late last year if that's what you guys have at the moment as well. Uh, those recommendations as I outlined and the optional character reference. And then we do have a file. If you've got some additional documents you'd like to uh, provide us, additional documents as requested um, it will be a great place for you to upload those. Each one of those options, if I go back a screen, you'll see that you have an upload button. You can only upload one document at a time. So if you have multiple PDFs for a given year, please know you'll only be able to submit one at a time. You can email additional documents to us or you can wait till we process them and you'll be able to re-upload additional documents as well. You'll see a blue checklist next to each one of those items once they are completed. And we do wanna make sure that we're communicating back and forth with you. So if you have to send us a screenshot of something, please make sure that all screenshots include the student's name, the relevant years or school where that information is coming from and make sure that we can clearly see everything on that document. If we can't, you'll probably get a note back from Miss Whitney saying you need to resubmit that so work on submitting it a different way. I suggest getting a cam scanner app. Um, most of them are free. You can get them on your cell phone and that way it can convert any pictures you take with your cell phone directly into a, a JPEG or PDF which are going to be the preferred methods of uploading documents for us. So please go ahead and do that as that gives us a better quality document that we can upload and manipulate rather than just pure screenshots. So once we get all of those items, once we have a chance to review all of those, uh, starting in January, we're going to start inviting applicants to start the interview process with us. When we start talking about what makes us different and reasons why you should send your kids here, we are an academically rigorous school. Most students are going to be prepared to, to be challenged more than they have at their previous schools when they step onto the grounds here. And the interview helps us to set to set the tone. Most of our students, their first ever interview is being done with us. I share all that not to scare you or frighten you or not to start making your kids nervous um, because that's not the approach we're going to take during that interview. We do take it serious. We want you to take it seriously as well, but your child is going to be the main focus of each one of these interviews. We ask for one parent or guardian to be present as well. And we're going to spend a bulk of our time just talking to your student. OK, but they're going to have a chance to tell us a little bit more about themselves, what they like, what they don't like about school. Uh, and most importantly, we're going to ask them if they want to go to school here. For us, that is a big indicator and a really important factor for all of our student body is whether they want to be here on campus or not. We want to know um, as you guys are talking about school and choices that you guys have discussed this at a family, that you guys have family buy in. We know ultimately that it's the parents call and the parents decision, um, but we want to make sure that you guys have had a chance to discuss this with your kids and you can get them equally excited as well. If they're nervous or they're apprehensive, that's okay. Bring them on the campus, come to Explore Faith. We're going to have a lot of opportunities to make sure that they get excited being here, um, but we want to make sure that they have a great opportunity to talk to us about what makes them special and unique. The interview, like I said, we will go ahead and open those up starting in January. We'll have a chance to review all the documents you submit prior to that. Um, there might be a time where we might request you to come on campus for an in uh, in-person interview. We might go ahead and waive that interview step as well and go right to decision. Um, just know that we reserve that right and we're going to do a, make sure that we're making the best decisions for you as well as for our school every time that we go through this process.
Our goal then, once we can go through this process, is to start releasing decisions by the middle of February. We work with the other private schools here in this area um, so that we can try to align those, um, but we're not going to be perfect. And we know some schools are going to make changes and decisions, uh, but we want to be upfront with you as we go through this. So if your school is a school that requests um, you guys to go through the re-enrollment process with them prior to our timeline of releasing decisions, I apologize uh, for, for that, but there's nothing that we're going to do to do special one-off decisions prior to the time that we're ready to release all of our decisions. So I want you guys to have these dates up front um, and we will continue to make admissions decisions on a rolling basis. Uh, I want to make sure that I reiterate this as well. Last year, because of the high number of applications that we received, we made the decision to completely close down our application process by March 1st. So our families that got started early were able to complete it. They started to receive their decisions if they had completed the process uh, by the middle of February. Uh, but families that were waiting until they felt 100% sure or until they had 100% buy-in from their kids, if that was after March 1st, they waited too long and they were not able to apply. I share that not to frighten you or to, to, to encourage you guys to apply before you're ready, but I do want you to know that you do not have to know today that you want to send your kid here. We have an entire process for you to learn about our school, to feel really comfortable with that decision. But if you're thinking about it, if you're here with us now, I'd encourage you to go ahead and start the application so that ultimately you guys have the ability to make the decision of whether you want to send your kid here and not waiting until it's too late and then not have that ability to send your child here next year. We will close down applications again this year for the 23-24 school year. All right, once we start releasing decisions, the step processes are still not done. We use Crusader Connect for all of our, um, uh, our students, our families, everybody that we have here from start to finish. Um, so you'll continue to have opportunities to, um, to complete your enrollment con contracts, submit immunization records, and then schedule placement testing just for our accepted students. So that's what you can expect there. Um, Ms. Whitney, I believe we've got some questions. Is there something I can clarify for families as we go through this? Hi, David. Um, we just have a question about if each student will receive a decision, whether they're accepted or declined. So they'll find out either way. Awesome. Thank you very much for that question, Jen. Yes, um, we are not going to leave you in the dark. Okay, every family will receive a decision if they've completed the application process. I add that caveat on there, you have to complete the application process. And it is a process, I've outlined everything there. Submitting an application does not give you a decision with us, okay? Submit the application, turn in all the documents, once we give you the opportunity to request an interview, complete your interview, then we will give a decision. If at any point you guys stop the process or forget to check back in on the process, you guys will need to, to track along and play catch up with that because we will not give the decisions until everything else has been completed. Jen, did that cover the question? It did, thank you so much. Awesome, thank you, Jen. And I'm um, sorry, so, this question. Um, how long would someone have to give an acceptance or a decline once they've been notified of their decision? Great question. Um, once you guys receive an acceptance decision from us, as well as an enrollment contract, you guys will have two weeks to make your final decision. So realistically, from now till the end of the process, you don't have to have your, made, your mind made up realistically until March 1st. Um, that will probably be the first deadline for families. Most families, by the time that they've received an acceptance or decline from us, already know where they're standing as well and what decision they want to make, which is why we have that shorter turnaround on that. Um, but we will give you two weeks officially with an enrollment contract. If you need more time, we're not taking your acceptance decision away. We just cannot guarantee a spot for you after that point, okay? So once we give you, or you, you your enrollment contract, we will hold a spot for your student for 14 days for you to make up your final decision, make up your mind, uh, work on completing your enrollment contract. Uh, after that point, if you still need more time, if you're still figuring out other situations, um, you guys will go to the waiting pool. And if we're able to move you out of the waiting pool, once you've made up your mind, we will do so. If not, you will stay in there until we have a spot and we're able to move you out of the waiting pool. All right, so speaking of the waiting pool, we put it uh, a little bit kindly here. There's a possibility of a waiting pool for the 23-24 school year. I feel fairly confident telling you guys right now 
that there will be a waiting pool for the 23-24 school year. Uh, this last year, applying for 22-23, like I said, we shut down the application process completely uh, by March 1st. We have wait, had waiting pools for every grade level by March 2nd, and we still have waiting pools uh, carrying on for families that are hoping to get a mid-year transfer spot for this year. So I feel fairly confident telling you there will be waiting pools again next year. All right, so it's important with that to know. We're going to make the best decisions, uh, make sure that we have the best students ready to go here at the school. And ultimately, if we give you an acceptance decision, we want your student here. We will not be able to accept everybody. We will not be able to enroll everybody, but we're going to do our best to, to try, okay? Uh, the last two years, we have hit enrollment highs, uh, at our highest ever enrollments here at school with just over 2,000 total students. So we anticipate carrying on with that trend, um, but we do, we'll work to make sure that any family we put in the waiting pool, we'll keep you updated on what the process looks like and what you can expect. Um, I'm a big numbers guy, I'm a, a data guy, so I, I do share this just so you guys can get perspective. For the 22-23 school year, we had 821 total applications submitted, and we ended up having 480 new students start with us, okay? Now, our acceptance number was higher than that 480. So you have a, a higher percentage chance of being accepted if you complete the admissions process, um, but we are right underneath, uh, or sorry, slightly above 50% for what our actual enrollment rate is for our student applicants. Um, so again, I share that not to scare you or frighten you, but to encourage you to get started with the process, to go ahead and work your way through and make sure you're hitting our timelines as we go. Um, that way you can put your student in the best spot possible to get a spot here with us at Faith Luther. All right, so um, the way you can expect from the enrollment and fee side of things and other opportunities that you guys have, I wanna put uh, front and center for you. Generally, there's a $50 application fee. Like I said, that is waived during the month of September. So if you guys submit your application this month, you will waive that. Upon receiving an acceptance and being offered a spot for enrollment, there's an $1,000 enrollment and activity fee. Um, and that will become due at the time that you complete your enrollment contract to officially hold your student spot for the upcoming year. That is a non-refundable deposit. That's a non-refundable non uh, fee. We do have sibling discount available on that activity fee. So children number two, number three are typically between $700 or $800 for our uh, sibling discount for their enrollment fee. And additionally, we we have financial aid available. Financial aid applications open January 1st. That is a separate application process that you will need to work your way through. And you will need to have your 2022 taxes completed to complete your financial aid application. Last year, we worked on an expedited cycle. Uh, our goal is to be able to give financial aid information or at least a very accurate estimate within 30 days of you fully completing your financial aid application. So for families that are working through that process, our goal would be that you complete your financial aid application by the same time you're completing the um, uh, admissions process with us, um, completing it about the time that we are giving uh, that interview for your student. That way you are getting financial aid information back at the same time that we are hopefully giving out admissions decisions starting in February. Okay. Tuition right now for the 23-24 school year is estimated at roughly $14,650. Our families are able to pay that in one, two, or 10 installments, typically starting in July. There's no penalty for spreading that out. There is no incentive to pay that up front. So that is our tuition. We want you guys to pick a payment plan that works best for you and works best for your budget. We generally see about a two to three percent increase on tuition each year, but we do not have variable tuition based off a of grade level or school. So our middle school students and our high school students are paying the same tuition rate, and that does not change just because you're going from eighth grade to ninth grade. There's no automatic stair stepper in that. Some additional costs that you guys can expect as you are working through that process. Um, we have a school uniform here on campus. All of our students are wearing a student polo in one of four different colors, and then black or khaki pants, shorts, capris. We've got a full handbook that will cover that much more in depth, um, but generally families are purchasing either, those items either new on campus here at the Shield, or they're purchasing gently used items from our thrift store down off of Rainbow in between uh, uh, Sahara and Charleston. So those options are available um, for the uniform bottoms. We don't care what brand you use on that, so you're able to purchase those wherever you're purchasing clothes. And then we also have uh, books that you will have to purchase based off of your student's schedule and grade level. And so that is a variable cost. Um, 
on the high end, generally our students in high school taking multiple AP and honors courses are paying between $200 and $300 per year. Um, whereas our students, like our sixth grade activity fee, book fee, generally is a bundle right in around $100, $130 as well. So a little bit variable cost there depending on your student and your student schedule. Oh, perfect. That was not a duplicate page. Give me a second. Let me go back. Financial aid, like I said, that is available for families that need to. That is a separate application. The application itself opens on January 1st, and the deadline we ask is for you to complete that by April 1st. Additionally, we accept uh, tuition and scholarships from the Nevada Choice Opportunity Scholarship Fund. So families that are receiving or applying for, for financial assistance through Nevada Choice are also able to bring those over here. We accept any outside scholarships as well. So we have military families I know that are, are getting support organizations, first responders as well. So if you are working with an organization that currently provides your student a scholarship, scholarship, talk to them about carrying over that scholarship here with us, and we'll make sure that we apply that as well. Jen, is there a question or some feedback that you guys are getting that I can help answer at the moment? Yes. So a parent is wondering, what's the general percentage of acceptances versus <laughs> declines, or maybe just how many spots are there open for um, people applying? Might be about Great. Is that Great question. And the answer depends uh, on two things. It depends on the grade that you're applying for. It also depends on uh, the given year and what our re-enrollment looks like, okay? So behind the scenes, concurrently with this application process, we are putting our students uh, and our current families through a re-enrollment process. Um, so we will get notification in November and December about which families are intending to return for next year. That will give us an exact indication of how many spots we can expect for grades seven through 12. In grade six, is our only brand new entry grade level that we have here. We do not have a uh, an elementary school. We have multiple feeder schools that support us, um, but those are separate schools and all of our feeder school families are going through the application process themselves. So everybody has to come here as a brand new student starting in sixth grade. We will have 260 spots for sixth grade, it is our smallest grade level. Uh, and then as we are able to offer uh, differentiated schedules and different class loads in seventh, eighth grade and into high school, we're able to size up a little bit. But those grade levels depend on our returning students to know exactly how many spots we have coming back. Okay, so we will bring in 260 brand new sixth graders. The other grade levels will depend on our current retention as well as our class schedule to determine exactly how many spots, okay? If you remember earlier, I told you that we did bring in 480 total new students this year. So that means we had roughly 220 um, students from grade seven through 12 that joined us brand new. Um, and there was a fair mix from grade levels between that, okay? Um, ninth grade is our other big entry point. Uh, we go increase in size pretty dramatically from eighth grade to ninth grade, which is why we're able to accommodate an uh, additional crop of new students at that point. And that's where we see a lot of our other um, non-Lutheran feeder families start to join us from Las Vegas Day School, from Cornerstone, um, from our Challenger and Mary Hill schools as well. Um, so we have some great support from those schools joining us after their school ends in eighth grade, coming over to us in high school. Um, and so generally we see about 100 new students uh, joining us in ninth grade. Um, so acceptance rates, uh, I'd say it's fairly high acceptance rates. Our families are doing a lot to prepare their students very well to join us here. Uh, acceptance rate is probably in the mid, low to mid 80% rate for our families that are completing the process. But like I said, that, that actual enrollment rate, the percentage of students based off of the percentage of families that apply is slightly above 50%. Okay, so you have a fairly good chance of being accepted. Um, but it's a lower percentage chance of actually getting a spot because we have a lot of really qualified students, a lot of really quite qualified families here um, that we want to be able to join our faith family and odds are we'll be able to do so at some point, it just might not always be able to happen on your first try. Miss Whitney, did I clarify that or did that cause an additional question? That was great. It's a separate question I have for you. <laughs> Perfect. Go ahead. Can you go into further detail of what the $1,000 enrollment fee covers, please? Perfect. So the $1,000 enrollment fee is actually two separate fees that we combine up front for our new families and then get split out for our, um, 
our returning families. So for a new family starting off with, uh, with us, the $1,000 enrollment fee is actually a $500 activity fee as well as a $500 enrollment fee. So that 500 is more administrative. It goes towards um, scheduling our overhead, things like that. It also goes towards our device insurance um, because we are one-to-one -one school. So all of our sixth grade and middle school students receive an iPad uh, as part of their tuition and all of our high school students re receive a MacBook Pro. We include insurance with that as well as device support here on campus. Uh, and so that's where part of that enrollment fee goes. And ac the activity fee starts to cover all of our baseline sports and clubs that we offer here in addition to it. So we've got a full accounting of that online if you go to the admissions page and then go to our tuition and financial aid policies. It will identify pretty much line items, each one of those items that goes into that. But generally, we don't have an additional cost for each sport that your student wants to play. Or if they want to try out for a play, we don't normally call, uh, charge our students to do that. A lot of our baseline activities are covered with our activity fee. Um, and if there's uh, cases where that's not included, you're notified as a part of participating in that sport. So you know that, or that activity, so you know that prior to making that commitment so you can make the best decision for your student. Uh, I see another question in there. I'll go ahead and answer that as well. A copy of this presentation or the slides. My plan is, and so far I feel like I've done pretty well not stuttering and stammering. So this will probably go online, assuming that I've been recording and it does look like I have. Uh, so I plan to put this online so you guys can review this. Um, if you have questions about a page specifically, please feel free to email us and I'd be happy to share this information with you as well. All right, I'm going to jump back into the rest of the presentation and we'll continue with the Q&A here at the end. I am working on trying to be mindful of your time because I want to keep this short and sweet for you guys. All right, so the to-do list. All right, these are your actionable items when you guys get done here with us, okay? First step is I want you to get started and to complete your application as soon as possible, all right? It's free right now. No reason not to go ahead and get started with that turn that in. I don't need your $50 when we do that. This is more of an incentive for families to get started. So go ahead and get started with that now. Once we assign a checklist for you, we will notify you through an official note in Crusader Connect. Go ahead and work on starting to turn in documents from your checklist, okay? You'll be able to submit those uh, required documents and recommendations directly through the checklist. If you have an issue with anything, you can call our admissions line or email us at admissions anytime and we're happy to help get you guys through the process. In October, then you guys are gonna start submitting your testing scores as well as your first quarter report cards from this year. And we want you to turn in everything that you can by December 16th so we can try to keep you in for priority consideration. We will review all of the items and all of the completed files at that time and then make determinations on which students receive interviews with us. And we will begin to invite students to uh, select an interview time slot in January for interviews taking place in January. That will be a 20 to 30 minute interview done via Zoom mostly. Uh, you can start applying for financial aid in January. And then our goal will be to start releasing decisions in the middle of February. So like I said, we are here to help. We want to help. So please, please, please call us, email us. Don't feel like you're bothering us. That is really what we are here to do. We are here to help you. Like I said, we want your students here with us. We want you to be a part of our faith family. So let us know what we can do to make this simpler, easier. If your student is just nervous or apprehensive, we're happy to schedule a Zoom call to just talk to your student and make sure that they get a chance to get comfortable here on campus and be sure to check out the different events that we have going on as well with Explore Faith or our campus tour or our Future Crusader Day, which is a, a shadow experience for current fifth grade students. We've got no shortage of opportunities for our families. Additionally, we will have uh, more towards our high school families and applicants. We will have an athletics preview night with all of our varsity coaches in November. And we'll also have an uh, high school academics exploration webinar in November as well, where you can learn about our academy system, the different uh, electives and offerings that we offer on the high school side of things. So like I said, this is just the first step of many. I encourage you to join us and be a repeated face for any of these events that we have come say hello to us we're happy to help with that jen i'd love to turn it over to you please let me know what kind of questions we're getting through q a and what i can help answer for our families at this time of course 
Let me see what I got here. Can you speak to the importance of like test scores or maybe some people have a different circumstance. They've been homeschooling and they haven't been able to get testing scores or a recommendation. Um, can you speak more to that in our process with that? Absolutely. So I'll take uh, those two pieces separately, issues with recommendations, issues with test scores, um, and, and kind of what we're looking for with that. So for standardized test scores, again, we realize that school's been a challenge, it's been difficult, it's been different for everybody, depending on where you're at, where you're coming from, and what that's looked like for you. So we do have some flexibility in that, um, in that we're offering for just the most recent standardized test scores that you have. If you haven't done a standardized test since third grade, Okay, go ahead and submit that, and we'll make sure that we make the best of that. If you haven't done any standardized tests, um, if you've been in a state where they don't do that, or you've been out of the country, email us, and we'll make a determination on a case-by-case -case basis on if there's a similar document or a different type of uh, piece of information that we can request from you, or if we just need to waive that step altogether. As far as recommendations are concerned, I'd be remiss if I don't mention that unfortunately there are some schools that are a little bit difficult to work with here in the Las Vegas area when it comes to the recommendations. Um, we've got some schools here that are just set up a little bit differently as far as their overall organizational structure. They really don't want to lose you as a family, so they don't make it easy for you to, to apply to us, um, and that's okay. We ask you to go ahead and request each of those recommendations put those uh, administrators, English teachers on the spot and make them deny your sweet little child the opportunity to come here. And when they do so, we'll work with you as far as what we'd look for on that, okay? Generally, uh, for families that are at a school where the English teacher will not or won't be allowed to submit a recommendation, we ask that you um, either provide a tutor or uh, an outside source. We definitely want you to complete the character recommendation and we'll work with you guys on case by case basis. If there's somebody else that we can make that recommendation fit, even if it's not the, the exact title that we need to request. So ultimately, we do want you guys to ask. Okay, that's gonna be the biggest thing. Even if you're at a school that we know is probably gonna tell us no, we want them to tell you no. Um, and then that way we can start working on alternative uh, accommodations for you. Ms. Whitney, what other questions do you have for me? So um, if someone maybe rushed through their application and has some changes, what's the best thing that they could do at this point? Like if they need to change a name, add a contact, um, anything they need to add for us to look at? Best thing is if you feel like you omitted information on your application, give us a call. Okay, I'm going to put this on. Most likely, you'll get to talk to Miss Whitney, um, and she'll be able to make updates to your contact, update to the application, make any notes that we need to add on your student's behalf. The application itself is not one that you have to do in a single sitting. Okay, so if you need to gather more information, if you're unsure about something, you can get started with the application, and you can walk away from it. Uh, your progress will be saved, and you can come back and restart that prior to submitting that as well. So if you're unsure about something. Just wait, try to get that information and then submit it. If not, if you know that you put in wrong information or made a mistake because you just misinterpreted what we asked, go ahead and just call us or email us. Let us know what changes you'd like to, to reflect in that application and we'll work to do that on your behalf. Well, cool. next one, David. What about recommendations? Will parents get to view those? No, parents will not get to view the recommendations. Part of why we get such good responses and thorough responses on those uh, is because we are telling our teachers and our admin that those are being done confidentially, okay? So I encourage you, don't just send a recommendation blind, okay? We make this really easy for you. You can add an additional note along with that. But if you're gonna ask uh, for your English teacher's recommendation, shoot her an email in advance so she knows that that's coming. Then she can also be on the lookout for that or he can be on the lookout for that as that comes in. Uh, and if they have some concerns, they can talk to you about that as well. Ultimately, if a teacher tells us that they just don't feel like they're in a position to provide a recommendation for your student or they have concerns about sharing that on your student's behalf, we're going to talk to you about that, uh, and we're going to allow you to resubmit that or resend that request to somebody else. Um, we don't penalize teachers for being honest with us. 
and we're going to look at what ends up on file. Okay, so if a teacher says no, for whatever reason, if there's been a long blood feud between your two families, that's okay. We'll work with you guys to make sure that we get that recommendation um, from another teacher or from uh, the best source possible for your students. Ultimately, we're on your side. We want to see each of your students in the best possible light. Um, so if there's been issues, Talk to us about that. Um, we're, we're, we're humans too. And so we know that sometimes things come up. Sometimes schools are just trying to do their best too. Um, but we would like you to request those recommendations as we have them listed and identified and let us work through any issues with you. Let's see. Um, well, I need a separate application for separate kids and I'm applying, David. Um, yes, each child that you are applying will need their own application. Part of the application process itself immediately creates a candidate profile for your student, and we are able to track that by each individual grade level, okay? So if you remember in my presentation, um, I would skip back to it, but I don't want to give anybody a seizure with the flashing lights. Um, the very first page on your checklist, uh, you all saw the uh, application as the first step. And then underneath our progress bar on the right side, there was a big red button that said apply another child. Okay, so once you submit an application for your first student, go back in, submit one for another student. All applications during the month of September are free. So if you've got seven kids that you would like to apply, you better apply now so that you guys don't have to pay for each one of those applications later once we get to the month of October. Right. What other do questions like, do you have for me? Do you want an actual transcript or is a yearly report card or progress report acceptable? For this year, for what we're asking for from the 22-23 school year, we would love to see an actual transcript, or sorry, a report card. Let me, let me answer that again. For this year, for the 22-23 school year, a report card is fine. For all previous years, I would love to see an unofficial transcript. You do not need, please do not go pay for an official sealed document transcript from your school. Most of our students coming from CCSD schools are able to download an actual transcript themselves. Um, and so please provide us an unofficial transcript for previous years, a report card, a progress report. Uh, both of those words are fine as long as it's coming after the end of the first quarter. I want to see a, a completed first quarter for our 22-23 school year. All right, we've got about five more minutes if we have other questions that have come in um, before we get to those last questions as you see on the screen. Please don't stress, all right? We know I have thrown numbers at you. Um, I know we're opening the process early. We are doing this to be in your best interest as well. We want you to have plenty of time to get started with the process so you don't feel like you're scrambling at the end. We wanna give you time to get to know our school, to get to know our campus, to make sure that your students are on board with us. Um, and just please know that we are here with you every step of the way. I had multiple families last year uh, that did not get in uh, based off of their timing and how we were able to go to the process and were put in the waiting pool. Um, and I was able to work with each one of those families. Uh, and for the most part, we got them all in this year. OK, so we are going to continue to work with you as long as you want to work to be here. OK, so please don't stress. Please get started now so you have time to go through the process and just know that we're going to work you through it as well. All right, we do really want to get to know your family. Each one of these items that we ask for, we ask for so that we can get to know your student in totality. We know that we're not going to get to truly know the ins and outs of who they are, but each one of these items allows us to see a different aspect, uh, to see your student in a different light. And so we really want to make sure that we are, are, are filling out our school with the best students, the best families, um, so that we can really continue to add to what we have with our, a strong faith family here. Ms. Whitney, do you have a couple other questions that have been posed that would be great ones to finish up with? We've had a lot of thank you saying that you're doing a great job. So that's a great one to mention. Well, I appreciate that. I know they're just being nice because I did stammer after I bragged about not stammering uh, to really botch it at the end, but I'm still going to put this online. I'm committed to that. Yep. Um, let's see, maybe some questions about some kids that have transferred schools mid-year. Do you want grades for just partial year or the whole year? 
So our application is going to ask you guys this uh, as well. We want to try to get a good school record so that we know what exactly is going on. So we also have the most recent results. So if your kid transferred schools mid-year last year, we're going to ask you during the application to identify the last three schools that your student was at. Okay, so for some of our sixth grade applicants that have been at the same school, you're going to list out the same school for third grade, for fourth grade, for fifth grade. If they transferred midway through the year last year, you're going to list out two schools for fourth grade and their current fifth grade school. Um, and so we're going to get flexible with that. We would like to see completed records for the year. So if they transferred midway through the year last year um, for fourth grade, for example, please submit two separate documents. So we see their first quarter at one school and their second or sorry, first semester at one school, second semester at the other. Um, we do want to make sure that we're looking at their entire year. We know that things come up. We're going to ask on the application itself, were they withdrawn? Were they dismissed? Those questions are not immediate disqualifiers. We do not have anything on our application that is an immediate disqualifier, okay? I share that with you because I want you guys to feel free and comfortable sharing, telling us your student's story, telling us your family's story. Um, if they struggled for a year, we want to know that so we can talk about what they've learned and how they've progressed in that time um, and what some some bad decisions they might have made in the past were okay so please be open and honest throughout your application know that nothing that you put on there is going to immediately disqualify your students we want to make sure that we can best serve you and your family here at faith lutheran we're going to be really open and honest about the classes the opportunities the services that we can offer all of our students and we do that not to weed anybody out but just to make sure that if there's something specifically your student needs some type of attention and we can't provide that we want to be a resource that help point you in the right direction for that. All right, Ms. Whitney, I'd say two more questions. So queue up what you have um, so we can answer two. Give me a good one to end on, um, but what's another one that you've seen here a, a couple times? Let's see. Looks like we are pretty caught up. If anyone else has any more they wanna ask any questions about as we're wrapping up, all right, so while you guys type that, if you have a couple more that will come in, let me just reiterate, um, we had tonight's Explore uh, our Applications 101 webinar. Thank you guys so much for joining us. On Saturday, September 24th, we will have our first of three Explore Faith events, an open house experience for you and your family to come explore all that Faith Lutheran has to offer, interact with all of our Visa students, our student ambassadors to learn about the student experience and interact with select teachers and coaches here on campus to make sure you guys get really comfortable and can envision yourself here at Faith Lutheran in the future. Our future Crusader Day, which is an event just for our fifth grade students will be hosted on October the 12th. You can sign up for that directly through our website. And then we will also have our high school varsity athletics preview night on Wednesday, November 9th, and our high school academics exploration webinar on Thursday, November 17th. All that information can be found online through our website. We are taking signups for all of those. But the first thing for you guys to do today would be go ahead and get started with the application, submit it while it's free during the month of September, and let us know how we can help you out. Jen, did that give you time to get one last question for me? Just another thank you for you, Mr. Dwyer, for doing a great job. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, sorry I don't get to see your faces since we went with the webinar format today, but I do really appreciate the opportunity to get to know you and your family better. I look forward to speaking with you guys all soon. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and shut this down for tonight. Please feel free, call us, email us, let us know how we can help serve you and your family. And we are really looking forward to you and your students being future faith crusaders. Thank you. Have a great day.